Your Honor, we call Dr. Uh, Alan Blaustein. All right. B L A U S T E I. All right. So, Doctor. Thank you, sir. Oh, and I'm. I'm asking questions first. I believe I may be the only one asking questions. Okay, okay let's hear right, them. Thank you. Let's go. Let's see it. Oh, Can you shit. Provide your full name? Uh, Alan Scott Blaustein. You're, you're a doctor, correct? Correct. And you're a psychiatrist? Yes. How long have you been a psychiatrist for? Uh, since 1987. Okay. <laughs> And you went to medical school? That's a long time. Yes. What medical school did you go to? Northwestern University. Now, Johnny Depp was a patient of yours, correct? Correct. Okay. You understood that Mr. Depp had substance dependence issues, is that correct? Uh-huh. Yes. Do you recall what substance issues, what, what substances he had, Mr. Depp had issues with? Uh... Marijuana, alcohol, uh -huh. opiates, I believe. Did you ever have an understanding that Mr. Depp had anxiety syndrome? I would assume so. I knew Mr. Depp had anxiety. Okay, yeah. I bet. It's stressful. And how did you come to be aware that Mr. Depp had anxiety? She told me that. No confidentiality. And do you recall having any conversation with Mr. Depp? Was I don't know. There was some question about uh, bipolar disorder diagnosis, but I do not remember okay. the specifics about the discussion. Do you recall not having a conversation case? with Mr. Depp about a bipolar diagnosis? I, I didn't know that. No. What behaviors did Mr. Depp acknowledge that should be changed? A judge. It's uh, certainly his drug use uh, and his huh. turning to drugs for to help relieve a lot of the psychic pain that he was experiencing. Okay. In working with Mr. Depp, would you agree that he had fundamental that Mr. Depp had fundamental issues with anger? I, I, I would say that he expressed having issues with anger. All right. That would Mr. make Depp sense. Express having issues with anger. Sure. Yeah. Did Mr. Depp express having issues of anger towards Amber? So this is recent. He expressed having anger towards her. Yes. Okay. Do you recall what reasons Mr. Depp told you as to why he was expressing anger towards Amber? I wonder. Hmm. I can't, you know, <laughs> no, I'll have to say no. In working with Mr. Depp, was okay. he ever suspicious Wait, of Amber having affairs? What? I can recall now he expressed uh, feelings of jealousy. Yeah, that seems to be established. I don't remember if it was about affairs. Okay. You recall... Any more detail about what Mr. Depp was feeling jealousy toward Amber about? Mm -hmm. No. This is useful. In working with Mr. Depp, um, yeah, this is. Did you great. see that he, Mr. Depp, had any issues with patients? Okay. Yes, he was impatient. What is your understanding about? Uh, issues that Mr. Depp had with Amber. Okay, here we go. It, it was a very chaotic here relationship we go. with uh, a lot of fluctuations and ups and downs and uh, seems that way. That's a difficulty in emotional expressions mm -hmm. and um, lots of anger in both places and you know, high intensity affect and emotional expression. Yeah. A lot of love, a lot of uh, disappointment, a lot of fears. So he Dr. just. Blaustein, I'm showing you what's been. Where's the details? Blaustein exhibit. Three. I want to know what happened. Do you recognize this document? Yes. Okay. What What is it? It's, uh, it's my a... invoice billing document. Okay. This is from your your files. 
Correct. That's a lot of money. It's a document in the ordinary course of business. Correct. God and damn. This, uh, billing invoice is for is for Johnny Depp. Correct. Correct. And so where it says ten to fourteen um, from your from your billing records, would this be the? Is this your understanding? The first time you you met with Mr. Depp. By phone, yes. Mm -hmm. And in total, TC. If we look at the number of sessions, is that the total time you either met or spoke to Mr. Depp that weren't uh, canceled or he didn't show up. Um, my county to, to 19, uh, eight, 18 times you met with Mr. Depp. Does that sound about right? That's a while. Looks like 18 times. Okay. Did you have any concerns about any of the amounts of medications that Mr. Depp was taking? Mm -hmm. uh, I had concerns about the Adderall that okay. I would have expressed to him. I've never taken Adderall. And what were the concerns about the Adderall? I thought about it, though. Uh, I, mm -hmm. and I don't recall the specific conversations, but I would have been asking about uh, it's Kappa. Uh, how he was diagnosed to have ADHD or under what circumstances mm -hmm. he would take that, especially if he wasn't currently working. Okay. Did you ever talk to Mr. Depp about um, what he did when when Marilyn Manson would visit? No. When you were working, I think I have Mr. an idea. Depp, um, yeah, I think and I, I think have I have an idea what it was. Mr. Depp was still. Yeah. Abusing uh, drugs and alcohol or not. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you do recall that there were times in your working uh -huh. with Mr. Depp where he had breakthrough uses of drugs yep. and alcohol. Yeah, that his relative sobriety was not complete. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is, that's what you mean by uh, breakthrough usage, that, it, that his sobriety, Mr. Depp's sobriety was not complete? Uh, well, relative sobriety. Again, I said relative sobriety because he did continue to use marijuana throughout, almost entirely throughout the time that I knew him, uh, with a short time exception, I think. So I called it relative sobriety, and then there'd be some breakthrough use. I think that's relative. Like, smoking yeah. weed isn't that and bad, when you say in my usage, opinion. Just so everyone understands. It's better than drinking. Uh, he was trying to be sober. He was working on sobriety. And, okay. Uh, I don't smoke weed. I never will. For uses, I mean, so, sobriety would mean the abstinence of using the substance. Mm -hmm. And so the breakthrough would be on a particular time he would have used the substance that he was trying to be sober of. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So in, a, in addition to marijuana, mm -hmm. In the time you saw Mr. Depp from October of 2014 through January of 2015, there were right. other times. There were times where Why I look so Mr. High. Depp Shut up. broke his sobriety with drugs or alcohol. I bet he, in addition course. to marijuana, correct? Yes, obviously. I believe so. Yes. Well, How did you come to that understanding, it, bro? Am I gonna get? Am I gonna mauled again? Do you know why? Um, I don't want to mauled Depp again. Come on. I know he was preparing to leave to Australia to mm -hmm. go to work. And uh, I assume that that was the reason. Uh huh. But he hasn't returned to you since he went to Australia in, in 2015, correct? Correct. Right. All and, right. And did anyone inform you as to why sure. he stopped seeing you? Last seen Exhibit 9 are notes reflecting your care of Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Uh, and you kept these notes in the ordinary course of business, correct? Correct. And you kept these notes in a file for Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. And this is page one of those notes from October 2nd, 2014, correct? Correct. Okay. Again, it'll, there, will, there will be plenty of places where I don't remember, I can't read what they say. They are, for 
my current attention purposes only in these in these particular notes. Okay. okay. And that's what makes them process notes. That makes sense. And working with Mr. Depp, did he discuss any? Um, he got AirPods. Abuse he received as a child or an adolescent. Of course he does. He get paying five hundred yes. an hour. And do you recall any difficulties that Mr. Depp was ta this talking to you money. about in his relationship with his fiance? This is easy, GG. Okay. No, not from this. Okay. Wow. What does it say? Such a pain in the ass. Do you recall why he was saying Amber was a pain in the ass? No. Okay. And what what's the next thing say? Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Well, in boxes about his kid's mom. Okay. Yeah. It's just and, such uh, a pain in the ass. <laughs> and I think I have the word destructive. What was destructive referring to? You know? I don't know. Holy no, don't. shit. Uh, oh my god dude. relationship 14 to 15 years mother of my kids uh, out of the official officially mm -hmm. um yeah he didn't want to be his dad i think and i'm not it's abandoning like his dad mm -hmm. and then below kids it says uh clear better uh she needed me to be all this Needed me to be. I'm gonna make all this week. Oh, well, it's, it's impossible. I all this work, I don't know. If we turn to the next page, uh, it says page mm -hmm. two. And they paid this guy five hundred dollars an hour. And then what's the next line say? Really? There's this violence, rage that uh, man we had over a couple of years. Five hundred, huh? Okay. And so, what is Mr. Depp referring 650. to? Six hundred and fifty. Sorry, my bad. Do you recall? So do you recall that in, in working with Mr. Depp that he spoke about um, violence and rage in other relationships in addition to his relationship with Amber? Uh-huh. Or well, rage and chaos. I, uh, okay. I don't remember violence, but uh, I do remember rage and chaos. Now, again, the context of this is, is, is by, I had met him at this point. <sighs> this is an initial man consultation hearing it so, again huh uh, to see whether or not he was going to start therapy with me uh, sir, but in working with so mr much? depp was he talking about rage and chaos all right i'll take that relationships in addition to okay. his relationship with amber correct yes yes what what other relationships was he talking about rage and chaos mm -hmm. again i don't have the specific recollection but i think it included his uh <laughs> Uh, the mother of his children and um, and arguments about uh, child, not, not child custody, child care or visitation or access to the children on the left. Oh, so this is, isn't uh, the first time he's been kids, fucked over by the justice 12. system. It's the second time. I get it. Yeah. And then below that, she tried to protect This is round me. two. She tried to protect me too. Mm hmm. You know who that's referring to? Details about the doctor? All right, all right, all right. My association now is his uh, sister, but uh, okay. I don't uh, I, I don't think that's true. I don't have a specific recollection, no. Uh, wouldn't take fa fear, wake up to fight devil. Okay. Wait, uh, wait up to fight devil. You know what that's referring to? Wait up to fight devil. What's? I think he referred to a devil as um, Come on. some version Come of on, uh, internal depression and chaos that he felt. Something like an everyday phenomenon he felt he was. Come uh, on. He's struggling. What is this? I think, I think would label it as a devil. Come so, on. So Mr. Depp label, labeled um, it's something Thanks he, for the that new was information. internal to him as, as the devil? As, as, as a representation of something horrible inside of himself, uh -huh. I would, would, would say. So the devil was something horrible inside of himself, correct? Mm -hmm. That's what Mr. Or the, the, again, I don't think he ever said that, so I'm, I'm going to be careful here. Okay. Um, 
The devil was okay. the representation of the battle that he had many days when he woke up with the depression and the sure. anxiety and fears that he had. Did Mr. Depp ever refer to himself as a monster? Remember the word monster in my office, but I don't know if it's referring to himself or not. Maybe that'll be more revealed as we go forward. Okay. Now, turning to Blaustein 12, um, which is page four of this exhibit. Uh huh. And it, it, there's a three at the top, correct? Yeah. And then to the right, it says, that says Amber Fiance, correct? Correct. What and is this? Work through, Bro. work through anger, just below that. Okay. And where it's saying work through anger, uh, is that referring to, to his anger Ever towards anger? Ever seen a monster? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's already what, established. Uh, he was saying then this, that part of his goal of therapy was to work through anger that he and his fiance had to, towards each other. Good. Um, then going back to the left. Um, better with girl about it mm -hmm. yeah self-destructive hard to not put in front of me okay you know what self-destructive hard not to put in front of me means is referring to i think it, the self-destructive was his drug use that's what i think referring to at this time that's i'm now looking at blaustein 13 uh page which has a page four are, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. And at the top, it says uh, Johnny slash Debbie, correct? Okay. Correct. It's right. confidentiality. Um, Apparently, courts can break it. And then it. the date, it says that's 10 what I heard. slash what? Yeah, I, that's what I heard. I that's 10 7. And so it says JD 10 sure. 21 14, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. A uh, lot of things work, intense work, fatigue. Need a minute. Uh huh. Here I can say with certainty his words, shit with my girl. No medical records. And what's that referring to? Be revealed. Yeah, I, I don't know. Difficulty he was having with Amber. Yeah, of course. Uh, do, you, do you recall what he was talking about? What difficulty he was having with Mr. Depp was having with Amber? Yeah, I wonder. No. I wonder. The next line looks like it says she refuses to accept. Correct. Do you know what Amber refuses to accept? what Mr. Depp was referring to? Nope. And to the right, it says Amber... Toilet what? paper? Amber wedding. You were, were you talking at this point about potentially Mr. Depp and Amber marrying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes, he was talking about that, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then what does it say under she refuses to accept? Uh, wedding February. And then what's next? Yeah. Uh, not want to go to marriage, 51 years old. Mm -hmm. Did, were there any discussions that you had with Mr. Depp um, where he had concerns about the age difference between him and Amber? Uh, I don't think so. No. Were they trying to paint him like now? What the fuck? What does it say under 51 years old? Oh, my uh, God. A lot of life experiences. Yeah. Uh, you're being my mother and psychotic sister. What did you understand Mr. Depp was referring to where you wrote you're being my mother and psychotic sister? I think I know. I think that's something that he said to, he told me he said to her. Yeah. He, he was, that, that Mr. Depp said to, to Amber, you're being my mother and psychotic sister. Uh-huh. That's what I would think, yes. Okay. Right. Then the next line. High tolerance for marijuana. Who has a high tolerance for marijuana? I, I, he did. Uh-huh. Right, turning to the next page. Um, Again, I think that we've come to the conclusion. And we're, I have a number five. I think there. Johnny Depp does drugs. What is it? Self something? I Self-destructed very early. I'm starting to see things and connect Mr. here. Depp, talking about himself being self-destructive very early? I really think this could yes. be the case. Okay. 
How is he being? How is Mr. Depp describing? I think he can drink too. Wow. Uh, I think I, again. Wow. I don't recall, but let's continue and maybe something's there. Uh huh. So he was trying to he was trying to be sober from booze. Yeah. And and pills. Correct? Sure. Correct. Okay. And then was it you who said uh, reward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, ask him about where where can he get rewards. Uh, we elsewhere. need more evidence. Yeah, sure. That, that's where probably true. Where did he true. get yeah, rewards? I, I, I maybe asked him where did he get rewards elsewhere, and there where he's he drinking. That could said, be Hawaiian punch. Um, in the past, and DNA, ecstasy, yeah. cocaine. Uh, 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 so, so uh, did you understand uh, you where know. he wrote MDMA, ecstasy, cocaine? Those are all the things he didn't do. I'm not quite sure, but that does are a thing uh -huh. that he had used in the past. Yeah, there's always another possibility that I had asked him specifically about that, but I don't think so. I think it's more likely that, uh, yeah. that those were things he had used in the past. Okay. Do you know what pills Mr. Depp was referring to to be sober from? Uh, I know oxycodone was uh, the main thrust at that time. That's a bad one, <laughs> and that's even prescribed, too. That shit's scary. They could prescribe you something and then it, you then it says, to. Uh, back to the left, it says left off. That sucks. Yeah, and that's probably thanks, a note America. To myself, the fucking bullshit system. To, I hate that. I thought a, a reward loop mechanism, oh. and it's parallel to a relationship. I've only taken it once. What kinds of rewards could come back to him that could be healthy? Maybe twice. I don't what know, kinds maybe of rewards twice. that could come from a relationship that could be healthy? And then uh, talk about. Uh, biology changes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I made it to myself there to uh, talk about how the brain changes in the face of uh, many of these drugs over time. Yeah. Did you talk with Mr. Depp at all um, that his brain can change as he continues to take these medication, these drugs? Uh, yes, I did. And then it says 10, 27, 14 more on relationship issues being accused in his word of being manic okay Branded by seeing children son is one of the positive aspects of the relationship i assume he's talking about his past relationship there sure yeah he's probably Mr. talking Depp about his kids that probably that fucked them up yeah absolutely it makes sense mom and his psychotic sister but the relationship reminded mm -hmm. him of his relationship with his psychotic sister and uh -huh. his mother, yes. and and Mr. Depp talked about that he was being accused of being manic. Yes. Did he say who accused him of being manic? Amber. I assume from this it was Amber. Turn to the next page, Blaustein sixteen. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Yeah, yep, it there just, it is. is uh, 10, big brain, 14, big brain. Thousand. There it is. The mood euthymic. You know what, what I know. What everybody Attention. knows. Uh, normal mood. Attention decreased. Um, you mean by memory attention? Memory okay. Difficulty with attention. Paying attention. Memory. Uh, uh, transitional Pretty difficulties. Watch. I know. I saw it. Yes, I saw it yesterday. What do you mean by having transitional difficulties? What do you mean by having transitional difficulties with this memory? I, I knew it was going to happen. Uh, it would have been part of a mm -hmm. uh, mental status test that I would have done in the first session, uh, where he uh, would have trouble uh, holding on to memory of things from five minutes ago. By asking for to remember three words, he may have had difficulty. He would have had difficulty remembering those three words five minutes later after distracting him with other conversation. I've had that happen right. to me with like and anxiety. Anxiety's done that to me. Uh, THC, yeah. a marijuana, as part of issue tetrahydrocannabinol. Yeah, that's what THC stands for. I'm so saying ADHD you, you too. Uh, yeah. THC as an issue with Mr. Depp's memory and attention, is that right? Doesn't THC do that? I don't with the know. transitional memory, at I least. Have, yes. I have no idea. Perhaps the attention. I'm not a doctor. Uh, MSE, mental status examination. 
uh, more present, more attention. Yeah, it does. I, I yeah. I mean, uh, I, don't, I guess. Uh, I guess. On dates, uh, ask when I T- ask him about. Kills uh, you? I don't know about that. What today might be? Okay. Uh, what today's date was, perhaps, is what that's referring to. It's today. So Mr. Depp was off on on. Oh, what date that was? Mm-hmm. Turning to the next page, uh, Blaustein seventeen. Okay. Uh, it says JD at the top, and then eleven, ten, fourteen. Right. See that? Yep, I have that. Not right now, okay. I can remember everything. Um, oh. And Mr. Depp came in to see you on eleven, ten, fourteen. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, and what's the first line say? Didn't things get Some way worse? Clouding, probably secondary to THC. But... What do you mean by clouding? Uh... Okay. Would there have been something in uh, confusion or something about his mental state or less less sharp? Has to be a breach of privacy? Uh, it's not. What's the next line say? Uh, it says no evidence of uh, brain fog. I had that a lot. It's bad. What do you mean by that? Uh, I didn't see Jerking in his off presentation else. any evidence of mania or hypomania. I always play better. Okay. Afterwards. Next line. Always. Uh, mm-hmm. Discussion about relationships, core issues of trust. Yeah. Amber says. Pick up the sniper after you're done, man. <laughs> Headshot. Context. Contact. Don't know. Okay. Uh, fruitless meeting with her therapist. Did you ever observe Mr. Depp with mania or hypomania in any of your other sessions? Not that I recall. Mm-hmm. At 10, 24, 14, Mr. Depp came in for another individual session, correct? 11, 24, 14. The first line said 15 minutes late. 15 minutes late, clear, relationship okay. stabilizing, looking at jealous parts of him. Uh, what do you mean by that, looking at jealous parts of him? Uh, things that make him jealous of what his role might be in jealousy okay and and what made mr depp jealous uh well about what was happening there but with amber i don't know i can't recall okay so my next notice it was a it was a triggering point my next notice triggering point uh uh-huh. early break up at 22 where an actress cheated with a leading man so was was mr depp Jealous of Amber being. Was that Mr. Franco? I don't remember that specifically. Who's that? Turning to Blaustein 18, uh, which looks like it starts at 12. The only thing wrong with that is he didn't say men. Uh, Mr. Depp came in for an individual session. Uh huh. Correct. And then it looks like you have paranoia in quotes. Mm-hmm. Would have been his word. Uh, third, yeah, of course. You know what he meant by that? The elements were fear. Said, over and twenty. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> so Mr. Depp told you something about paranoia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and he, as he defined, you should have been more paranoid. And his elements of paranoia were fear, envy, and vigilance, as he told right. you. Then there's what? What's the next day? Twelve, eighteen, fourteen. Yeah, you should have been more paranoid, man. Well, All see. these people fucking around on him. Uh, Twelve, eighteen, fourteen. Yes. Um, and Mr. Depp came in for a session. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Patient working. So psychotherapy on phone. It says possible there was a phone session that, that I didn't mark as a phone session. Uh, big fight with girlfriend yesterday. Uh-huh. Uh, struggling with how to separate. So he was trying to leave. Let her tell you her feelings. Relationship needs to take care of you. True. Her to go to a safe zone, withdraw. Different than childhood experiences. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it's at one six uh, fifteen, correct? Yeah. Correct. Um, and what are these notes say? Okay. Patient late, 20 minutes. Um, 
All right, so he was late again. I can't believe it. The therapy section. This is fucked up. Goals to make a beeline to bed. Uh huh. Uh, using relationship to take care of the individuals. Uh. Let's see. Not logical approach to Amber's work. Mm -hmm. Take care of emotions. Yeah. Uh, sobriety continuing. And then uh, blasting 20. Right. We move down to the last page. And uh, this is for 1815, just to be clear. Uh huh. 1815, correct. Slight uh, vulnerability. Woman in studio who admired Amber. Threat. What did that mean? What did you understand that? Uh, that probably related to your prior question that there was a woman who admired her that he felt jealous of. Let's see, the next thing is. Okay. Vulnerability. Instance, okay. Instances of vulnerability. Yeah, he's really anxious. Yeah, this sucks. Fear parallel. To have like your to private notes. Childhood. Like just put in front of everybody, man. That sucks. Inability. Free or fight only way. What does that mean? Free or fight only way. Free. Yeah. Free or this fight. This sucks, man. Or free and fight is the only way. Mm -hmm. And uh, my. Uh, understanding of that is either to be free of the relationship or fight for it and right positive um yeah they should bring in an alpaca just to kind of freshen things up amber through brown dash vulnerability let's keep and, things um, exciting a little and, bit and you know 8 15 was the last time you let's bring um, in an alpaca or two saw or spoke to mr Depp yeah, as a I, patient correct uh i believe that's true did mr Depp? describe to you at all how his jealousy would present itself whether he's jealous of a man or a woman in relation to Amber uh -huh. it would make him angry it would make him feel insecure uh huh yeah I, I bet I think that makes sense I think that's the way a lot of people would fucking feel yeah absolutely your Honor, our next witness is Eric George. He was the attorney for Amber relating to the op-ed. Will you please stay? Oh, great. Right. So he was Amber's, this is Amber's previous attorney. Your name for the record? Sure. Eric George, E-R-I-C, last name is George, G-E-O-R-G-E. -E. Okay. All right. Let's go, uh, Eric. Could you also state your business address, please? Uh-huh. Sure. 2121 mm -hmm. Avenue of the Stars, Suite 2800. Yeah, on the moon? Los Angeles, California, 90067. Okay. And what is the name of the law firm that you work with? It's Brown, B R O W N E. Yeah. George Ross, O'Brien, Anaguay, and Ellis. That's a lot and of you people. Are an attorney, Mr. George? I am. That's a I whole am, lot of people. And I take it from the name of the firm that you are one of the named partners? I am indeed. Okay. Damn. Oh, he's a big shot. Okay. Litigation, uh, largely in the business and entertainment areas. So he makes money. Have you handled defamation and libel matters? I have. Where are you barred? In other words, where? what states are you in? California, right? Sure. In California, New York, in Washington, D.C. Okay. And are you also a member or barred in the United States Supreme Court? I am. Oh. Can you please tell right. us where you attended undergraduate and law school? Sure. At Georgetown for both undergrad and law school. Okay. What, if any, service did you have with the Council Big of the boys. United yep. States there Senate it is. Judiciary Committee? Sure. Uh, in... I'm just pausing to get my dates correct here. Yeah. Um, in approximately March of 
I, I was, long, I was nine years old. began service as counsel to the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee, where I served through uh, about mid-2000. I was playing Pokemon then. And what, if any, service did yeah. you have to the secretary, uh, the legal affairs secretary to the governor, Pete Wilson? Sure. Uh, from uh -huh. about March 1997 to January of 1999. This guy's been around I the was block. Counsel to then Governor Pete Wilson. Mm -hmm. And my specific title was Deputy Legal Affairs Secretary. This guy prints money? No, he doesn't. He doesn't make any Have you been recognized for your career achievements since you have been an attorney? Uh, no, he doesn't make any achievements. I'll say immodestly, yes. Uh, various. All right, now, now he gets to talk about how great he is. Uh, lawyers are from time to time in magazines and yeah. publications and whatnot. Of course. And what if any uh, uh, recognition have you received as one of the top 100 attorneys? Uh, in California. Big Dick. The legal paper annually puts out a list of the top 100 attorneys in California, and I've been fortunate to be selected as one of those All right. uh, for many years. And what, if any, recognition have you had as being a super lawyer in California? Super lawyer. Uh, same answer, except that's, I believe it's called Los Angeles <laughs> Lawyer Magazine. I, I could have that wrong, but again, annually super they lawyer. put out a list of their super lawyers. And oh my God! Are you also a member of the Super American Lawyer Mega Pint? Like I am. What? What is with this woman? Is, like what? What is the what is qualifications this? for becoming a member, being invited to be a fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers? Uh huh. Sure. So the the college reaches out to individual lawyers who mm -hmm. distinguish themselves and generally occupy the top one percent of law practice all right and it's an organization dedicated to the development of professionalism within the practice of law great i'm going to now turn to amber heard and i'm going to ask you mr george how long have you known amber heard okay here we go um i have known amber heard gosh it's got to be a good five years I'm going to be referring to an op-ed, and I'm going to use the term op-ed. It, it's obviously an opinion editorial okay. uh, that uh, Amber I'm Heard, familiar. Uh, ended up uh, with that term. publishing with the ACLU. And yeah. so in the Washington Post, December 18, 2018. Um, okay. So as I go through and ask these questions, I'm going to be using just the term op-ed. Will you be comfortable with me using op-ed and understand it to mean that particular publication on sure. December 18, 2018? Sure. Okay. So what, if any, legal representation did you provide to sure. Ms. Heard relating to the op-ed? She presented to me a draft of the op-ed and asked for my counsel in terms of reviewing it, uh, editing it, and finalizing it for publication. When is the first time Amber Heard reached out to you in connection with the op-ed and reviewing the op-ed? Okay, let's it see It was those. certainly within the time frame of December 6, 2018. Uh huh. In connection with the op-ed, what, if anything, was your objective in representing Amber Heard with respect to the review and revision of yeah, the Yeah, what is this? To try to avoid defamation, right? I reviewed it and spent some significant time on it yeah. to make sure that there would be no meritorious claim that could be brought against her uh -huh. in connection with a defamation or related yep. type of tort claim and ideally with that in mind to minimize the possibility Amber of said she didn't write sued it? in connection with publishing it so mr george why would you believe what amber take said a look at exhibit number nine yes why would you believe are that are you familiar with this document i am please describe what it is uh-huh uh, as its title it's a judgment of dissolution of the marriage between Amber Heard and Mr. Depp. 
Were you familiar mm -hmm. with this document and its contents when you represented Amber Heard relating to the review of the op-ed? Yes. And what was your objective in representing and advising Amber Heard on the op-ed in connection with this stipulated judgment of dissolution of marriage? So to, uh, my objective was to make sure that there would be no meritorious claim that could be brought against Ms. Heard in connection with the publication of an op-ed, whether that is a tort related to, say, defamation or something uh, akin to it, yeah, uh, but also including any contract-based breach claim uh, arising in connection with the judgment. That makes sense. Okay. And what if any... Uh, sure. Uh, what if any indications what did if, you I'm have so sick of hearing Amber that shit. during that time frame that Amber did not intend mm -hmm. to follow your advice or did not care if she was in a compromising position or might be at legal right. risk? So let me answer that this way. Uh, really, two points. Okay. Number one, uh, there was never anything that she said to me to the effect that uh, she was willing to run some risk of being sued or that she wouldn't listen to my counsel or anything of that sort. Yeah. Uh, number two, that uh, she affirmatively did follow in all instances my counsel with respect to these particular edits. That makes sense. Yeah, of course what she would. What if any legal advice yeah, of course. provided by you to Amber Heard respecting the Washington Post op-ed was disregarded by Amber Heard. She didn't disregard None, anything. to my knowledge. Of course not. Why would she? What if any legal advice He's a super provided lawyer. by you to Amber Heard respecting the Washington I mean, Post op-ed was followed by Amber, Amber Heard? All of it. Okay. What, what, if any what was legal it? advice did you provide to Amber Heard in connection with the drafting and publication of the op-ed that was not made in good faith by you? I, I acted in good faith throughout and with the best of my abilities. I would have never expected him to say that. Right, he, so, so he yes, acted Honor, in good we faith. Have Jessica Kovacevic, she's uh, Who the fuck? Amber's agent. And that's approximately 27 minutes. Why is the last name for me? <laughs> that's a tough one. K O V. Okay, great. C -E Let, let's see what Amber. Let's see what Amber's meal ticket right. is. Uh, Thank you. You know, Amber's her meal ticket. Let, let's see what she has to say. Yeah, let's go. Here we go. All right. Good afternoon, let's go. Ms. Kavasevic. And Ms. Kavasevic, do you know that you are? Um, here today uh -huh. uh, in your personal capacity and also as a representative of your okay. agency, WME. I do. Ms. No counter, but, yeah, I don't know why. What do you do for work? I'm a talent agent. Mm -hmm. Would you please describe in just very general terms what a talent agent does? So Mr. Incredible, though? I don't know. Generally, you procure work um, for your clients. You um, make introductions, you read their scripts, mm -hmm. you negotiate their deals. Right, yeah, and sure. I take it Ms. Hurd is one of your clients. It's her yes. agent. Did Ms. Hurd have a successful career at the time you began working with her? No. Yes. And over the period uh, that you've worked uh, for with Ms. Hurd as her agent, what have your job responsibilities entailed? Um, like I mentioned before, introducing her Hergery? to producers and directors, writers, um, studio executives, um, procuring work for her, uh, uh -huh. introducing her, just introducing her to people that can employ her, and okay. then negotiating her deals, and then dealing with whatever happens on uh, while she is working, anything that arises that mm -hmm. needs dealing with. Did you ever, at any point in time, see Mr. Depp? Hit Miss Heard? No. Were you working this seems with Miss Heard when she was variable. cast in the original Aquaman? She was cast in. I was. She was cast in Justice League first. Uh huh. And then the deal was to be in Justice League, the first Aquaman and the second Aquaman. Did you assist Miss mm -hmm. Heard in procuring the role of Mira in Aquaman? Yes. Was Aquaman a successful movie? Yes. 
extremely. Was Miss Hurd's performance in the film well received critically? Nobody cared. Yes. Were there any negative views about Miss Hurd's performance in Aquaman? It was irrelevant. In the press, you mean? Or what do you mean specifically? Well, in the press or otherwise. Like, no, there weren't any negative. As her talent agent, did you attempt to renegotiate Miss Hurd's salary for Aquaman 2? Uh huh. Yes. To how much? Uh, when did you do that? To how much? We did that uh, around this time last year. Okay. Why did you attempt to renegotiate it at all? It's standard to uh, renegotiate uh, these types of deals. Yeah. Uh, it's normal practice. Um, when a movie, I mean, when Aquaman came out, it was the most successful movie of all time ever. Um, Holy so shit, really? Even more so for that reason, but for any successful franchise wow. movie, when you make um, a three or four picture deal like we did, um, it's insane. In success, of uh, all it's time ever. To go back and renegotiate the deal. And now getting to your point, why Hell did yeah. you choose to do it last year at this time? Um, because that's when her option was exercised. And move over when Infinity you did War. Get around to trying to negotiate um, you and WME nah. were successful in doing that. Correct. Uh, when did he call Warner Brothers to renegotiate uh, the next film? It would have been the end of February last mm -hmm. year. What year is that? 2021? Yes. At some point, was there were there press reports well, that Miss Heard was getting released from Aquaman 2? More than the Dark there Knight? There were uh, online rumors for a while that she was being replaced. When did you first hear about those? Um, mm -hmm. What? <laughs> First, I don't know exactly when, but it, it was okay. way before. before it was sure. it was way before okay. this. It was maybe even a year before this. Fine. I will accept that. Six months before, maybe. So nobody ever told you that Warner Brothers misrepresented the reason that they were replacing Miss Hurd, correct? That they misrepresented. Why, no, it. why would they? Did there come a time when Miss Hurd? was mm -hmm. restored to her role in Aquaman 2. Yes. At that time, okay. uh, what were the terms of her restoration to Aquaman 2? The financial terms? Don't beat yes. anybody. Uh, she was going to be making $2 million on the, on the second film. Okay. Was that consistent with the original contract? Yes. She still makes the same amount of money. Is consistent with what uh, Warner Brothers originally gave as the rationale for not using her in Aquaman 2? The, the lack of chemistry between her and Jason? Yes. Yes. So it, uh, I knew Jason was a good did guy. Did there come a time when WME came to understand yeah. that uh, Ms. Hurd's role as Mira in, in Aquaman 2 was diminished in some way? Uh -huh. When she was sent the script, uh, she was sent the script directly. Mm -hmm. which is the common practice for these films. You're aware that Miss Heard has a contract with L'Oreal, correct? Yes. Uh, were you working with Miss Heard when she signed that contract? Yes. What's a bot? Uh, a bot is a, a fake account that's created to execute a certain objective. I'm sure she's an expert what, in this. Um, no. What is your educational background since high school? No. College. Oh, what college did oh, you attend? College. NYU. What year did you graduate? 2005. Okay. What was your major? Communications. When WME first began working what about with Ms. Heard as her talent agent, the fuck? Uh, you said she had had some success. How well known was Ms. Heard? Um, she was pretty famous. Um, she was within the industry. You could call anyone and they knew who she was. Um, so uh -huh. she had a, a certain level of, of, I feel like not until fame. after Aquaman. She had starred in 
movies and shows already by that point. Yeah, I feel like not until after Aquaman. A wider lens, you know, over the time that you've yeah, actually, yeah, maybe because of Johnny Depp, yeah, with Miss Heard. It's a good point. How would you characterize the arc of her career? Yeah, it's a good point. Um, Of course, I would say she was a known actress when I started working with her. Um, I said she was someone that you could call executives and producers and people about everyone you know knew her name um she hadn't yet like reached um big star status but she was definitely um you know she, she could get the lead of an independent movie she could get the lead of right. a tv series um when i worked with her we greatest we movie ever st- slowly started to like strategically you know have her work on some more prestigious projects and work with mm-hmm. you know uh better directors smart and then when she got justice league that was a you know turning point for her that was a big deal um, absolutely and then aquaman you know subsequently it was big dick. um big dick was obviously the be- you know the biggest thing she had ever been a part of true and is, is the arc of her career now aquaman. on the upswing with her being part of Aquaman 2. Is it in the upswing? No. Tell me what you mean. Why not? I wonder. Um, Because typically um, when you have an actor who is in a movie as successful as that, as Aquaman was, um, greatest movie ever, their career um, and the best totally changes and they're in a different echelon. They, you know, get way more offers they're yep. just put in a different place um position wise with studios um they're more bankable so they can green light projects um all of those kind of things are consistent with when you're in a, a blockbuster of that size that makes and sense. um with her uh that did not happen um you know it happened you know very significantly for her co-star Obviously, he's the lead of the film and he's the title character, but um, even, you know, even a small percentage of that did not happen for her. Um, so uh, that's that's my assessment. What, Why I'm not? Sitting here uh, today, do you have that Damn. this caused her career any harm? Um, Damn. The, I mean, evidence in that. That's that's brutal. In my experience and the experience of my colleagues and in, in, in the experience of this business, um, you your career takes a turn after something like that. You're, she was yeah. very well received in the movie at the time. Everyone well, was she's very not happy awful, with her man. at the time. There was no issues. <laughs> what are you saying? And then to have a complete downturn after that and then have that coincide with constant tweets and negativity put out about her. Uh-huh. Um, I don't have a physical piece of paper of That's evidence. That's my but fault. It's the only logical conclusion I, I can draw. I, I've can caused this to happen. Can you name a single role she has lost as a result of any activity by Adam Waldman or anyone at his behest? Just say yes. Um, there was a movie at Amazon okay. that she had been offered um, with Gael Garcia Bernal. I don't know what the, the final um, title of it is called now. I can look it up. Okay. Um, it had a working title at the time. Um, that they um, took away from her. And, um, you know, the lead actor who was a producer on it very much wanted it to be her and was very frustrated with the process. And no one. Simp. No one can say um, out loud, we're taking this away from her because, you know, of this bad press. Because so then why'd they ask Disney that? It's nothing she did, and it's it's all hearsay, and it's all, you know, whatever. Yeah, why'd they but ask Disney that, huh? There's no other reason. Now, Ms. Kovacevic, you, you've you testified. Was it James Franco's movie? No shot. Adam Waldman, correct? No shot. Correct. And can you point us to any career opportunities that Ms. Heard has lost because of any statements made by Mr. Waldman? I mean, the, the, the Amazon movie, for one, is one that I, uh-huh. is tangible because that Nobody is an example it. of something that she had before all it's, of it it's, that it's was tangible. then um, taken away. Um, I know that uh-huh. um, a campaign she shot for Todd's via Katie Slater um, was scrapped and not used. Um, 
uh, I don't. I, there was not another specific example because, like I said to you, no one is going to say to me, oh, we can't hire her because of these tweets or whatever. They just don't want to hire someone that has baggage, bad press around them. Yeah. From, you know, these accusations calling. They don't want to no deal one wants with someone it. who's being accused of a liar and making something up. And people you know, that have problems are problems. Somebody. No one wants that association with their project. I get it. And directing your attention 10 pages into the sure. article, there's a, another quote from Mr. Waldman. Mr. Waldman states in this article, quote, quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first attempt didn't do the trick. The officers mm -hmm. came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed, yeah. and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, and then placed a second call to 911, end quote. Did I read that correctly? Seems that way. It just shows the top part of that on this page, but the top part was, was correct. Okay. Did any uh, potential, thoughts up. Did, was W... Emmy aware of Adam's statement, Mr. Wallman's mm -hmm. statements in this particular article? Yes. Now, you testified a little bit earlier about there being tweets from Adam, and I assume you were talking, you were referring to Adam Waldman, is that correct? Yes. And, and what, if any, impact did it have on Amber Heard's career and career path to have Mr. Depp's lawyer? putting out statements in the press and in tweets that Amber Heard was lying, making things up, creating a hoax of abuse. The data does that not support that. his comments spurred on, uh, it just I, added fuel to the fire. It does not. So there was already so much media coverage. And that's what you There was observed. already so much media coverage, but it's his it fault. Aquaman, and I'll call it Aquaman 1 just to make it a little bit easier. To understand I'm big. what if any performance Bro. issues were raised with Amber Heard by anyone she uh, wanted that Range Rover that was responsible this would never for happen the if she wanted the Range Rover no performance issues raised whatsoever and what was your understanding of how Amber tested with the audiences in Aquaman my understanding was that she tested extremely well she was hot and, and this is That's all we Aquaman needed has reflected all the markers of a very successful movie at this point? Yes. You testified earlier that it's quite typical when you have a series of three to four uh, films in a, in a franchise yes. or a series uh, to be able to renegotiate as you go into the sequels. Do you recall that testimony? They could replace her somebody else that yes. was hot and be fine. Okay. And why is that? It wouldn't matter. Um, because you make the initial deals um, you know, uh, before the movie has done, you know, well. Um, and then when the movie overperforms like that, it's just, mm -hmm. it's a custom. In light of the success of Aquaman, uh, would you expect that Amber Heard would be receiving endorsements as of this time? Yes. And, and what is the typical, uh, what is the typical process that happens after someone has starred in a very successful movie such as Aquaman and Amber with Mira? The endorsement department would, um, a combination of offers and then um, seeking out offers, that uh, seeking out opportunities. Okay. Now, given Amber's career trajectory leading up to and immediately after the success of Aquaman 1. Yeah. Did you expect her career to go on an upward, downward trajectory? It's obviously or going up. I expected an upward trajectory. D duh, and you why is say that? that. She, because in the success movie. of a film like that, it's it's usually always the case. And immediately duh. after the successes of Aquaman, would you have expected Amber's annual earnings to increase, decrease, or stay the same compared to the previous five years? They would I would have expected up. them to increase. And why is that? Because her um, her profile had been raised internationally. She was in a movie that was successful worldwide. And when you are in a movie, uh, 
that performs that well worldwide, your bankability is, uh -huh. is stronger. Um, you can finance an independent film more easily. You can uh, green light a film more easily. Um, you can just do more and for more money. True. Do you recall what the budget was for Aquaman? $17. The first one? Um, I don't know. It would have been probably somewhere between uh, 150 and 200 million. That's a lot of money. Immediately after the six, I should success make movies. of Aquaman, would you have expected Ms. Heard to continue to earn at least the fee she made on Aquaman on future big budget studio firms uh -huh. or less or more? You, um, that becomes an actor's quote. Um, yeah. Their fee. Um, and, uh, yes, typically, like, you will then earn mm -hmm. your, not on a tiny independent film, you're, you couldn't make that much money on that, but um, another studio film, another your rate. film I at a streamer it. or whatever, something like that, you would make that much or potentially get a raise. Other than Aquaman 2, has Amber obtained any roles with a budget the size of Aquaman's? No. 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 Has she been hired for any films with budgets over $100 million? Hopefully not. No. Immediately after the success of Aquaman, would you expect the success of Aquaman and her starring role in that film to increase her ability to get more movie studios uh -huh. to be interested in her, decrease or stay the same? Increase. And did it? No. Mm -hmm. Would you expect her uh, to get more TV roles? Jackson. Yeah. And why? Why? Um, because um, I mentioned earlier um, in the conversation, um, you know, TV and, and films are so blended now, and there's much less of a delineation between picking projects between That's film true. and TV. That's true. It's a good insight. And did Amber receive more TV roles as a result of Aquaman, the success yeah, of Aquaman? Yeah, TV is much more popular. No. I wonder why, as Monchatter Day, Immediately after five the subs. success of Aquaman, would you have expected Amber to star in more than one project per year, less, or the same? Probably It more. depends. If it was a big, you know, Aquaman takes up six months of the year. Big movies take up longer time. Up all the Indies, oceans. you can do a couple of them a year. It just depends. The bottom so of I, it. So I wouldn't put a, a number on it, but so definitely um, more than zero. And has Amber started more than one project per year since mm -hmm. then? No. Immediately after the success of Aquaman, did you expect Amber to earn between five and ten million dollars a year for the next five years? I would have expected to renegotiate on Aquaman too, most certainly. Um, and so right there, um, that, that would have been significantly more and um, she would have Yes, I would have expected her to earn more in a combination of TV, film, and more endorsements. Uh -huh. Was it your understanding that WME passed on to L'Oreal suggestions to assist them in being able to block some of the harassing uh, Instagrams they were getting at that time? What the fuck? Yes. All right. Let's bring up 30 again, please. What What, what is this? Is? Now, did in fact L'Oreal suspend having Amber Heard on the International Women's Day campaign? Yes. Sure. What the conditions were for for the for the renewal? Um, it was just essentially that they were renewing her. Um, uh, I. It was the same fee. Um, that was the, the the bulk of it. It was you know like an, a How raise. Much? How much? Um, How much? But they were extending How her. Much? How much? Okay. How much money? And typically, ah. coming out of the success of Aquaman, Come on. would you have anticipated that Amber could have negotiated larger <laughs> fees for commercial One projects? dollar. Yes, we would. Okay, and why would that be? Because her profile had been raised. She was, yeah, of you know, um, she had done something super successful. So, in typically, that's what you would do. That would just be the standard practice. When did you first learn about the change.org petition? Oh, my God. Out there to try to get Amber Heard dropped from Aquaman. Oh, my God. I don't know when I first God. saw it. Uh, 
were you aware of it as of May 27, 2020? Oh. Yes. You earlier All bots. Uh, talked about bots in response to one of Mr. Chu's uh, um, questions. What? what, if anything, was your understanding of these bots at this time, during this time frame? My understanding just, is just based off my own, um, mainly based off my own research, just clicking uh -huh. on the, the accounts myself um, and then discussing it amongst the team. Yeah, she and, saw like three of them. What did you learn when you did that? She like clicked on some Just of as them. I would go through, you know, daily, just looking at comments uh -huh. or, uh, you know, just the negative comments. Clicking on them, many of them were just kind of accounts made for this kind of commentary or just accounts that just had you know no followers no no posts nothing um or following just amber and johnny things like that that doesn't mean they're bots and, and i'm sorry and so what did you that learn from clicking on to those that led you to believe they were bots they weren't consistent with uh what i know to be uh, actual instagram accounts when you look uh -huh. to set a career trajectory I'm sure you for understand an actor that. who just broke out in a major franchise film, what a fucking moron. would you look to other comparable actors' careers to ascertain what type of acting jobs they could get? I, 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 I mean, I've been doing this job for, you know, um, quite some time, so I, I don't necessarily look to. I fucking know what you're talking about. One or the other, but in general, when someone is in you know, what was at the time the most so successful film ever released, um, the natural progression is growth I'm and mad. I'm mad again. more films, more, you know, more work, more money, all of that stuff. Oh my God. And when you say the most successful film ever, you're referring to Aquaman 1, correct? Correct. Ever. Okay. Ever. Um, Never been a more successful actor salaries film. used in your mind to ascertain the asking price Ever. for an actor in a similar Citizen film? Kane, Are comparable in actor the dirt. salaries the used rings? in your mind to Lord ascertain the, the asking price for an actor in a similar film? Avatar? Yes. <laughs> Would you consider Anna de Amas Star Wars. to be comparable to Amber's in measuring like Star Wars would have been after Aquaman 1? Anna de Armas, yes. I would say that would be a, a, a comparable... Um, that would be a good comment. <laughs> oh my God. Right. Yes, ma'am. Is that yes. what you have for today? That's it. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our, our day and the How end of our lovely. week. How um, lovely. So I want to make sure you have a good three days and come back for our last week of testimony uh, and uh, enjoy your weekend. I just want to remind you again of uh, what we need to remember as we go through the weekend, okay? So you're not to Talk read about anything about this case. You're not to watch anything about this about case. It. You're not to listen to anything about the case. This applies to television, newspapers, magazines, uh -huh. the internet, and any online sites. Further, you're not to read, watch, or listen to anything about this case on any social media yeah. networking site or streaming service. In addition, you must not you communicate with anyone me. about yeah. the case, whether in person, over the phone, by email, text, or instant messaging, or by any other electronic or non-electronic means. This includes your fellow jurors, friends, family, uh -huh. co-workers, acquaintances, uh -huh. and strangers. I also instruct you that you cannot do any research or make inquiries yep. about this case, whether online or by any other means. Yep. For example, you cannot look information up on the Internet that is related to this case mm -hmm. or related to the persons involved in this case, nor may you consult dictionaries or other reference materials. What you learn what? about this case is limited to what you learn no in the walls of this courtroom when proceedings are underway. All right? So enjoy your weekend. We'll see you early, 9 o'clock, ready to go. Someone broke the rules. Morning, okay? I bet they did. Thank you. I bet they did. Like the the fucking like, how she know they're bots? The thing is, like this woman could have said something different to make it sound like they were bots, right? If they were saying the same copy paste message, or if their account was made on the same day, like there are a lot of ways that you could have said this is what a bot is. Right. This is how so, you can define what a uh, bot is. In this matter, Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp, please do not uh, do any posts on social media over the weekend and no public statements, please. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and we will see you on Monday morning. As for the attorneys, 8 a.m. tomorrow. I thank you for all the jury instructions, objections. We're going through those now. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, I am missing some exhibits from depositions that we need to get no, to get not. with Jamie so we can get those um, in 
get them all taken care of for the week. Um, another thing that I'm doing, just to give you information, um, mm -hmm. where I'm getting IT together to do a laptop uh, for the jurors for deliberations. The laptop is okay. going to be scrubbed, and it's just going to have the audio and the video files on them. Okay, so I'm, they're going to get me a mock-up by Tuesday. It's just going to. It's not going to have any nice. Wi-Fi or That's internet smart. or no passwords. So it's just going to have that on it. So once I get it um, and I approve it, I'm going to have it, both parties take a look at it and make sure everything is on there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's supposed to be on there. And that's going to go to the jury when the physical evidence goes to the jury. Okay? It just seemed like that was a better way to do it for the audio and the video files. Okay? Uh, as far as times go, I can give you your updated times of the, as of this minute. Um, for plaintiff, plaintiff has used 42 hours and 45 minutes. Okay. Defendant has used 53 hours and one minute. Oh. So the time remaining for the plaintiffs is 18 hours and 30 minutes. He's got a lot of time. And the That's a whole lot of time. And the time. time for the defendants is 8 hours and 14 minutes. That's a whole okay. lot of time. So anybody have any other issues before we're done for tonight? Uh-huh. All right. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Yes? Thank okay. you. Thank you. God damn, why they got to start at 8 a.m.? That's so early, man. God damn. All right, so we got to talk about some other stuff. Turn around triple, uh, um, three X multiple launch number, uh, three point million. No, the thing is, like, uh, highest gross. So it was actually the most successful Warner Brothers movie, uh, or sorry, DC movie. That's fucking crazy, but I thought Aquaman was good. Like, as I said, uh, I've always thought Aquaman was good. I I've I've said this many fucking times. Uh, tomorrow, yeah, the, yeah. Tomorrow's for the attorneys. Uh, it's not for us. We don't get to watch it tomorrow, right? It's just the lawyers. Uh, that's it. And, and so, like, yeah, what say over here? Some of the main events. Yeah. So basically, uh, Amber Heard once again brought up a bunch of people to corroborate stories that she told them. Uh, that's about it. Uh, she said that these things happened. Uh, Magmore with the 20 gifted subs. Uh, one of Johnny Depp's ex-girlfriends from 30 years ago uh, showed up, and uh, she said that um, uh, that she had sexual relations with Johnny, and uh, Johnny broke up with her and apparently threw a bottle at the wall once, and he had a assistant named Pig. So uh, we have that. Uh, there's a, a data scientist that got bullied by a lawyer uh, into not saying what was obvious, and it was honestly just embarrassing for him. Uh, but let's see, what else besides that happened? Aquaman, uh, we learned, is the most successful film of all time ever. I didn't know that, uh, but yeah, there you go. Uh, Amber Heard did not make any more money after Aquaman, and uh, I think the evidence reason for that is kind of obvious. Uh, there's that as well. Uh, let's see. Um, I, I think that's about it.